Springfield United Methodist Church, where we are committed to loving Jesus and loving others. I'm Dr. Joanna Besky, and I am the pastor here. Our call to worship this Palm Sunday, Hosanna, blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna, rejoice, for the Lord is in our midst. He comes with joy and hope. He comes to set us free from our fear. Hosanna. Hosanna, glory to God in the highest heaven. Let us continue to rejoice and praise our God as we sing the song, Raise a Hallelujah. I raise a hallelujah in the presence of my enemies. I raise a hallelujah Louder than the unbelief I raise a hallelujah My weapon is a melody I raise a hallelujah to fight for me. Our Old Testament reading for today is from Zechariah 9, 
verses 9 through 10. Rejoice greatly, daughter Zion. Shout, daughter Jerusalem. See, your king comes to you, righteous and victorious, lowly and riding on a donkey, on a colt, the foal of a donkey. I will take away the chariots from Ephraim and the war horses from Jerusalem, and the battle bow will be broken. He will proclaim peace to nations. His rule will extend from sea to sea and from the river to the ends of the earth. Our gospel reading for today is from John 12, verses 12 through 19. The next day, the great crowd that had come for the festival heard that Jesus was on his way to Jerusalem. They took palm branches and went out to meet him, shouting, Hosanna, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Blessed is the King of Israel. Jesus found a young donkey and sat on it, as it is written. Do not be afraid, daughter Zion. See, your king is coming, seated on a donkey's colt. At first, his disciples did not understand all this. Only after Jesus was glorified did they realize that these things had been written about him and that these things had been done to him. Now the crowd that was with him when he called Lazarus from the tomb and raised him from the dead continued to spread the word. Many people, because they had heard that he had performed this sign, went out to meet him. So the Pharisees said to one another, See, this is getting us nowhere. Look how the whole world has gone after him. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Who doesn't love a parade? In 1974, our family was moving from California to New Jersey, and I was six years old. My grandparents, my Oma and Opa, took me to see the Rose Parade. The Grand Marshal that year was the man who created the Peanuts, Charles Schultz, and I was so excited. We were there the day before walking around and seeing all the last minute touches to these flower filled works of art. My Opa went out in the middle of the night and set up the chairs and saved us a place so we could have a good view. What a memorable day. Perhaps now you're thinking about a meaningful parade in your life. The Macy's Day, uh, the Macy's Thanksgiving Day Parade, perhaps the 4th of July Parade, or how about that Philadelphia Mummers Parade, <laughs> or when the Flyers won the Stanley Cup. Or perhaps you've seen those old movie clips about the welcome home of those in the military uh, after World War II. Flags line the parade route. Guests of honor pass by in the best, fanciest cars. People turned out from all around. Applause and shouts of thanksgiving could be heard as the line of cars drove by. Paper and streamer swirled in the wind. One look at this celebration and you knew immediately it was a victory parade. Things haven't changed much in biblical times when a king conquered another nation or a general captured a city, he returned to a celebration. Many waved palm branches, a symbol of victory. People would come out of the city to welcome home the victors. Shouts and cheers would go up around the city and the king would, tr would ride triumphantly on a mighty steed a horse that stood tall and pranced around in pride. One look at this ancient celebration and you knew immediately it too was a victory parade. And of course, we are familiar with the story of that first parade in Palm, on Palm Sunday. Jesus and his followers, both the 12 and the broader community around him, were making a pilgrimage to the temple for the festival of Passover. This was the festival in which the Jews to this day celebrate their, their release from slavery from Egypt. Thousands of people traveled from distant points to celebrate together in Jerusalem. This was a time when there were strong elements of nationalism among the people. They longed for a Messiah, a Messiah who would lead them out as a king and overturn 
the reign and the yoke of the hated Romans. Now, as they celebrated Passover in Jerusalem, the people were remembering the stories of their great leader, Moses, who led them from slavery to the promised land. They were thinking about great King David, who as a shepherd boy defeated the Philistine giant, Goliath. They remembered King Solomon, who built the amazing temple, which was later destroyed by the Babylonian Empire in 587 BC. Now, all of this provides the context for that first parade on Palm Sunday. Jesus could have entered Jerusalem that day just as he had on other occasions. He could have walked in the company of his friends and other pilgrims uh, who were headed to the Passover. But Jesus chose instead to enter in a very special way. In fulfillment of the Old Testament prophecy in Zechariah 9, which we just heard read, Jesus came into Jerusalem riding on a donkey. Jesus chose to enter Jerusalem proclaiming God's reign of peace, God's reign of shalom. Jesus' ministry from the beginning had been about compassion. Jesus was passionate about caring for those who were hurting. Jesus spent his years of ministry healing the sick, feeding the hungry, and talking to outcasts. Jesus' passion, his heart's desire, was God's reign of peace. Jesus rides into Jerusalem to begin the last week of his life. Jerusalem is packed with people who've come to celebrate Passover. Many come out to join the crowds that have already gathered, showering praise upon Jesus. Palm branches are being waved in victory. People are shouting, Hosanna! They are shouting out that Jesus is the King of Israel. One look at this celebration and you would know immediately it was a victory parade. Except Jesus is on a donkey. He's not in a fancy chariot. He's not on a mighty steed that stood tall. He's on a little donkey. The donkey's young. It hasn't been ridden before. It's not been in war. It's not impressive. It's a donkey. The donkey was an animal of peace, not war. It was an animal that conveyed humility and gentleness, not violence and bloodshed. Not what they expected of the king of Israel, not what they expected him to ride in for his victory parade. Now, with the Roman rule and soldiers everywhere, the people were hoping that Jesus would bring Israel back to its glory days of King David, they were hoping that they would be free and secure and protected from anyone ever oppressing them again. Some were hoping to see Jesus free the Jews from their Roman oppressors. After all, wasn't that uh, what Jesus did? Isn't that why he came? What about his miracles? If he could perform such spectacular miracles, surely he could kick out the Romans. Others would have been there because they had heard about those miracles. Jesus' feeding of the thousands with a few loaves of bread and a couple fish, walking on water, casting demons out of people. And don't you think the word had spread ahead of time, ahead of that profession, that Jesus, on the way to town, on the way to Jerusalem, had healed two men who had been blind and now could see. Many in that crowd were uh, in Jerusalem that day were hoping to be amazed. They waited, standing on tiptoes like a little kid at a parade, straining their eyes to look to the gate, awaiting their first glimpse of Jesus and his followers on the way. When Jesus finally arrived, they shouted, Hosanna, save us. In their book, The Last Week, New Testament scholars, John Dominic Crossman and Marcus Borg, point out that that parade, which herald, heralded Jesus' entry into Jerusalem, wasn't the largest or most spectacular parade in town during that particular Passover season. Back then, the city's population would have bloomed from 40,000 to 600 during the holidays with Passover being the most popular of them. 
These scholars point out that there were two processions, two parades into Jerusalem on what we call Palm Sunday. One we know well and commemorate today with the waving of palm branches. Instead of an army of highly disciplined soldiers, he was accompanied by his disciples. They were joined by others whose lives had been touched by Jesus along the way. Some of them were people that you and I might recognize from the stories that the Gospels tell about them. An accused adulteress who had been a stone's throw away from execution before Jesus defended her before her accusers. A Samaritan leper whom Jesus had healed and who now followed him with a grateful heart. A woman who no physician could heal of her hemorrhaging and yet she was completely healed just by reaching out and touching the hem of Jesus's robe. There might have been a blind man who had had his sight restored or a paralytic still carrying his mat on which his friends had carried him into the presence of Jesus to be healed. Some of those were tax collectors whom everyone despised but whom Jesus welcomed. All in all, those who followed Jesus into Jerusalem were a troop of rogues, rejects, and ragamuffins. Also entering Jerusalem at Passover from the west was the Roman Empire Emperor, sorry, the Roman governor, Pontius Pilate. Like the Roman governors of Judea before him, Pilate lived in Caesarea by the sea. In other words, Pilate spent most of his time at his beach house. The yearly Passover celebration made the authorities nervous. They worried, they worried that when the people gathered to remember how they were liberated in Egypt, they would get ideas about freedom and start a rebellion against the Romans. In general, they considered it dangerous to have so many members of an oppressed group in one location. So with the crowds of devout Jews follow, uh, coming into Jerusalem, the Roman governor moved his headquarters for Jerus from uh, Caesarea to Jerusalem to show strength and to prevent outbreaks of insurgency or violent rebellion against the Roman rule. His procession was the visible manifestation of Roman power. Now notice the contrast Pilate entered Jerusalem mounted on a war horse. Marching with him was a column of cavalry, as well as a company of foot soldiers. This was a military parade. This was a display of raw power of Rome. This parade of the Roman governor was not to celebrate Passover. Instead, they came to make sure that there was no disturbance in the Roman peace. To emphasize their power, Rome regularly uh, executed hundreds of people at a time by crucifixion. They did this in a public way, as public as possible, because the Roman rule was a reign of terror. The sound of marching feet, the cracking of leather, the clinking of bridles, the beating of drums would have had a sobering effect on all those who saw this parade. There would have been no shouts of Hosanna as the powerful pilot rode astride his horse, hoping to strike fear in the hearts of the resentful onlookers. As Pilate led a regiment of his own most trusted soldiers into town, he did so with the confidence, knowing that he was backed up by several battalion of Rome's finest, gathered just outside on the west side of Jerusalem, ready to flood the city at his command. It was as if the Roman authorities were saying, let the people have their festival, but also let them know there is a Roman presence in this city. From the west came Pilate, leading his parade of armed guards. From the east, the direction of Bethany, came Jesus riding on a humble donkey. It would seem that Jesus wanted intentionally to set himself in stark contrast with the other procession coming into town. 
On one side of Jerusalem, the humble king riding a donkey, surrounded by children and Passover pilgrims, proclaiming God's reign of peace, a reign of compassion. On the other side of Jerusalem, the western side, the Roman governor on a war horse, surrounded by military might, determined to maintain power at any cost, a reign of terror. By the end of the week, the power of Rome would add Jesus of Nazareth to those many thousands who were sacrificed to make sure their power remained secure. As Jesus approached Jerusalem, the parade he was leading out saying, blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. This was a king who treated their lives as if they mattered. Pilate's parade came in, a, in the name of a different Lord. The Lord he served was the emperor Tiberius. Something had to give and something did. When these people cheering Hosanna just days later were incited by their leaders to call for Jesus' uh, crucifixion. One can't help but see the image of a Jesus who offers us a choice between two parades. It's so easy, isn't it, to simply get caught up in the enthusiasm of the crowds and join the processions which had the loudest brass bands and the most elaborate floats or perhaps the greatest number of celebrities or the most charismatic leaders. Holy Week reminds us how easily we are distracted and fooled by the fancier parades and promises. On display that day were two parades and two different passions. Rome was passionate about displaying its might and had no qualms about the shedding of blood to expand their holdings. Jesus was passionate about everyone having life and dignity in a world of peace. The kingdom of Rome, Rome was one controlled by military might and the absolute power of the one who could compel the most fear. The kingdom of God, which came near in Jesus, was one in which there was no need for fear. And so Holy Week invites us, it invites us to ask the question, which procession may we have turned out to see? Which ruler would we have hailed? Which ruler do we hail and worship today? Now, if you think about that in the honesty of our hearts, admit that we might just have turned out to see the parade for earthly authority. Perhaps we confess in this holy week and be transformed. Transformed like the centurion who, standing watch at the foot of the cross, heard Jesus breathe his last and confessed, truly this man was the Son of God. You see, sometimes we get caught up. We get swept away in the parade of the world. We all make decisions and we fall out of step, but we can be forgiven. We can make the right choice. We can choose to pick up our cross and follow the way of Jesus. The way, that way leads through Jerusalem. It's a hard way and a long journey. It goes through the sorrow of Holy Thursday, the anguish of Good Friday, and the blackness of the Saturday before Easter. And we await the glory of Easter day. We watch through the dark hours of this week, knowing that the dawn will break that resurrection morning. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, I pray that this week as we reflect on these last days of the life of Jesus, that you would show us those parades that we have just stumbled upon and have been swept away. Help us, Lord, to fix our eyes on Jesus, the author and the perfecter of our faith, and to follow him and him alone in all we do and say. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Once again, we thank you for worshiping uh, with us online. Please uh, let us know in the comments or in the contact card on our website. 
uh, where you're worshiping from, where you're watching, and if there's any way that we can uh, be of service to you. On the website, DeerfieldUMCNJ.org, you can share prayer requests, you can give to the ministries of the church, and you can find out about the things that are happening. If you are local and watching this in real time this Thursday, we have a Monday Thursday communion service at 7 p.m. here at 1555 Highway 77 in Deerfield Street. Yeah, that's the address. Um, in uh, addition, um, on Easter Sunday, we will be having two services, a sunrise service at 630 and then um, the 930 service. If you're looking for a place to worship on Good Friday, there is a community service happening at the Elmer United Methodist Church from 12 to 3. Feel free to come and go at that time. May the Lord bless you and keep you, make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. Go in peace, serve the Lord. Amen. Mm -hmm.